Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth Swift tutorial. In this tutorial, we will talk about the view life cycles. If you have watched tutorial number 12 of Objective C, this is almost identical. I'm just going to explain the view life cycle like view did load, view will appear, view will disappear, and this is stuff and implementation in Swift, not in Objective C. So uh, I would just uh, suggest skip if you have watched that tutorial. For those who have not watched Objective-C tutorial, that's not a problem. I am explaining it again in Swift, so make sure that you understand every single details that I explain. We have view life cycles that is very important in Swift and also in iOS development. So let's move on. Suppose that we want to communicate between controller and view, and controller wants to send a message to the view. We have to use IB outlet. If we remember from previous tutorial, which was a converter app, we used IB outlet to send a message from controller to the view. So this is the legal way to communicate between controller and view. And what would happen if the view wants to com communicate with controller? So we call it IB action, which was a button uh, or slider or anything else. It it could just send a message to the controller and says, okay, something happened on view. And then controller decide what to do with that action. Okay, just to remind you the converter app that we created in previous session, we had IB outlet. And this is how controller talks to the view. How? For example, we had results label and we want to talk to the view. So we define this IB outlet and then we use it here and say, okay, this outlet, the text should be this. So this is how we talk from the controller to the view. But if the view wants to talk to the controller, we use IB action. So for example, we want to see when a button is pressed. So this method is called whenever the button is pressed. And we can do our calculation inside of the method. Okay, what is view life cycle? If I want to define this term, I should say the series of stages that occur from the creation of the view until unloading from the screen. It means that we have some stages from the creation of view elements in the screen until it goes out of the screen. So why do we care? Because, for example, we want to know when the view comes to the screen in order to initialize some parameters or we want to know when the when the screen when the view go out of the screen in order to save some parameters for example user typed something and we want to save this data before they go out of that screen so we need to know these stages i will talk about the important stages and once we reach to that other parts we will talk about them later but right now i will just talk about three important life cycle of the view so imagine that we have just we have just one single view application that has only one view and user tap on our application and our view wants to come to the screen the first method that is called is view did load this is the most important life cycle method and this is a great place for initialization because it will be called one and only one time during the whole life cycle. And also all adlets are set. But be careful uh, about the geometry things and anything related to geometries at this point because we're not sure at this point that if this is an iPhone 4 size, iPhone 5 size or even iPad. So there's a better place to set the geometry things. Next, view will appear will be called. This method is called each time that the view appears to the screen. So it's not a good place for initialization because it could be called more than one time during the life cycle. But it's got a good place for updating the view. So if you have a tab view and you want to be notified once the user could go to the tab and then come back to your tab again, it's it's a good place to update the view. 
Okay, suppose that the user wants to leave the view. This time, view will disappear, will be called, and this is the best place to save the data. For example, remembering the scroll position or saving whatever user typed so far, and that's this is the right place for storage. Okay, here is how you can override the view lifecycle methods. Uh, you can just say view did load and it will autocomplete for you. So you have to put override before it because we are just overriding this function. And also you have to, you should not forget this line of code which is a super view did load. It's needed for initialization for this method and it gets the super uh, implementation. Then you can add whatever you want to uh, implement initially. So for example, instead of uh, results, here, this text, I want to instead of result to show something like zero. So I would come here and say in view the load, this text should be number zero. So if I run the program, it will initially set it as zero, and then if they uh, calculate something and hit the result, uh, it will show the new number. So this is how we can write override. Same thing for view will appear. You can say view will appear. So as while I'm writing, you can see that it's run and it shows zero instead of results. So I can so just say view will appear, and then the first line of code that we should not forget. It's super view will appear and here I would say animated we should pass this um, boolean here as well and then we can add our logic here so here I would just say uh, in order to see which one gets first and the next one what is the next one I would put two zero in view will appear. What would happen is first it will go to the view did load, it set it as zero, then it will come to view will appear and set it as two zeros. So let's see what would happen. We should see two zeros because this is the last function that will be called. Uh, what, let's just test it. As you can see it's two zeros. So it, this is for initialization. This one will be called multiple times. If I go outside of the view, I mean, um, user press the home button and then uh, immediately comes back, this v this view will appear, will call. Then we have another one, view will disappear. So view will, as you can see, there are other um, lifecycle methods like view onload, view will onload, view will sublayout, but we will talk about these things later. So we will disappear and then we have to do super view will disappear and passing the argument that it has inside of the method. And whatever we want to save or we want to do something after user goes out of the screen we can do 